it's kind of like a lesbian litmus test. Anytime a girl comes up, were you in the mood? Yeah, uh-huh. I came to LA in 1997, and I was really fortunate that I booked a TV pilot right away, and it went to series. And we were about to start shooting, and suddenly got pushed to mid-season. So I remember saying to my agent at the time, I'm going to New York. Jennifer Westfeld and I met at sort of a theater retreat in the Catskills, and I basically called and said, I've got seven weeks off before I start this TV show I'm doing want to take our writing and rent a theater and get some actors and put up a scene night. It just kept growing and growing and the themes started becoming more and more human and, and deeper than just comedy. One of my assistants was Jennifer Westfeld. She made $10 an hour. She worked at my desktop uh, computer and a few years later she wrote a play called Lipstick and she asked if I would play her mother. We did the play, we just invited friends and family, it was really fun. And my agent called on Monday and said, 10 studios have called to option your play and turn it into a movie. Like we'd heard of people doing this, we'll find investors and we'll just raise the money and make the movie. Neither one of us had any experience writing screenplays or really anything. I remember buying Final Draft, like, I don't know, <laughs> so it's like action line, whatever that is. And The first thing that comes to mind is that old, a little chestnut about writing, which is kill your babies. And it seemed like we had to kill a lot of babies to get this script written. Jennifer and Heather have a very high bar of excellence. We had really, really worked so hard for so long on it. And it just felt like we might never get to make it. We made the decision to buy it, buy the rights back to our own work and make it independently and raise all the money ourselves. So this film was not greenlit in the traditional sense. We were pretty um, naive and I think that helped us in a lot of ways because we were a little bit fearless, I think. Is this for tongue? Or... Uh, I think we should just play it by ear. Just see how it goes. Okay. I had known Eden Wormfeld, who was one of the main producers on it. Charlie, uh, Charles Herman Wormfeld, who's the director, was Eden's brother, so she had thrown his uh, hat in the ring. I landed on my sister's couch in, uh, in the Fairfax district, and down the street um, lived a couple of women who were working on script, Heather and Jennifer. Charlie was not the most experienced director at that time, and in fact, his sister, our producer Eden, said to him, Charles, you're never gonna direct this movie. Stop thinking about it. They were looking for a name, and at the time I was, you know, I had no name. So um, I just kind of chased it. I think they chose Charlie because Charlie was flexible and collaborative, and this was their baby. It took me a very long time to get the job. We probably didn't know how wrong it could go and didn't know how high the stakes were. I think we were all so surprised to just discover who our cast would end up being. Cameron Mannheim actually suggested me for the movie. I had auditioned for it. Uh, they did not want me at first, and then Cameron kind of came in and said, you're crazy not to cast him. I remember Jen, and I remember the camera, and I remember really kind of trying very hard to impress them. I uh, was the fortunate result of a casting director who had the sense to make me audition for the best friend role when they really wanted to send me out for a two-line old lady at a wedding. When we arrived at Jackie Hoffman as our Joan, it was largely because she was such an original and she brought such a different color to the film. It went away from stereotypes and kind of created something totally new, I thought. I still think so. It's so <sighs> radical. I know. God, tell me everything. And I'll never forget when we finally had that first day of shooting, what a miracle it felt like. New York at that time was a very special place. It was the end of the Clinton years, and it was before 9-11, and it was before all the mayhem that followed 9-11. I remember when I was, like, the first day, the first day of filming, and I wanted to, like, really do a good job, and the first scene we shot was me uh, kissing Heather Jorgensen in the hallway. And so I was like, I'm gonna give this my all, and I'm, like, you know, swirling my tongue around in Heather's mouth. My first girl kiss. And you have to give me one scene where I can at least hit a home run, just one. Well, she didn't give me one, she gave me several. Our director, Charles Herman Wormfeld, was wonderful, but we were on a very strict budget. 
this whole thing was shot like by the skin of our teeth. Like we barely had the money every day. We were stealing our locations. I was doing this big emotional scene. I cut, my producer comes up to me, Eden, and says, we're leaving, we've been kicked out. We were contracted, we'd signed a contract with the people there. But then they get, they got cold feet, which happens sometimes. I'm walking down Madison Avenue, going into stores, and saying, could we shoot here tomorrow? <laughs> These two women who ran this little store that sold cardigans and sweaters and stuff said, sure, for a thousand bucks, come on in. It premiered at the LA Film Festival. We, um, we almost didn't make the deadline. We were running out of money. We were running out of time. We almost didn't make our first screening. I was sitting next to my sister and I just remember holding her hand and just thinking like, we did it. You know, biggest debut was um, at the Toronto Film Festival. We had two screenings at Toronto and one was on September 10th. 2001 and one was on September 12th, 2001. I was doing a series in Toronto at when 9-11 hit and, uh, and it premiered at Toronto at 9-11. I remember the next morning I woke up and I wanted to see five movies. I was like, I'm at an international film festival, I'm going to see five movies tomorrow and the first one was Monsoon Wedding at 8 in the morning. I remember hearing somebody walk past me and say it's because of the bombs in New York. And that was like my first, uh, you know, I just went white. We had used the, the towers as, um, I remember Larry Sher and I just thinking how the, the towers could, um, you know, represent this relationship, these two sort of like iconic New Yorkers. There were at least 12 shots of the skyline. Um, so 36 hours after this happened, people were watching our, you know, light bright, indie rom-com, um, watching the skyline as it would never be again. Ultimately, we ended up reshooting uh, just because we decided, with the movie being released in March, that it just, um, it would be so distracting from the message of the film and it would be so um, needlessly traumatizing for people. What is the legacy of Kissing Jessica Stein? Well, I hope there is one. The legacy of Kissing Jessica Stein is complex, I believe, because, you know, not everyone loved the way we handled the ending of our movie. I remember uh, when it first came out, some people hated the ending, and they're like, this movie is a wonderful movie, you just have to turn it off three minutes before the end. I feel like the, the, pre the presence of queer stories and queer characters um, has has grown exponentially since then and the way that we're thinking about who we are and what our options are and what our language is around those options is um, is also you know just has exploded. The scene that has stuck with me and that has sort of been the most meaningful is the scene with Toga on the porch. That extraordinary scene that would bring me the Golden Satellite Award for best uh, from the foreign press for best supporting actress we did in two takes. The mother takes the love of the daughter above all other love. I think I think she's a very nice girl. Gay people have contacted me, written me, come up to me on the street and, and said, you know, I was in the closet for so many years and I saw your movie and then I came out to my parents. I got this call. Tova, this is Barbara Streisand. I just saw Kissing Jessica Stein and I want to thank you for your work. It means a lot to me and it meant a lot to my son. I don't think anything could ever top that for me uh, as an artist, as a writer, as an actress, as anything to um, hear those personal stories from people. I think it's timeless. I think it's about that a relationship with the person you love is more important than what sex they are. After it, when I saw the product, I was really touched and thrilled by what a quality, sweet, charming product this was. Oh my God, I saw that movie when I was filling the year of their lives and it launched me on a completely new course. You, you sometimes feel like you've, you've hit, uh, you know, moments that, you know, that you've been part of something that, that does have some kind of weight to it. I just sometimes think, wow, that may be the, the finest piece of entertainment that I ever make in my life, and that'll be okay. I love stories about people trying to figure out what love is all about. I love stories about relationships and 
characters and opposites attracting. And um, I hope this rom-com will endure and I hope there will be many more to come.